good, 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 good. I see it off right now. I had a little delay and I knew it was already off. So if it seemed like I paused a little bit, sorry about that. Um, yes, I'm seeing in the chat room that, wow, Sister Gifty, she says she's triggered. You know, me and Meow, how are you doing? It's been, it's been a while since we spoke, but we're gonna keep coming with these shows that deal with real issues and not just foolishness. We wanna get down to the core. And I was gonna shoot for an hour tonight, you know, a little more maybe, but at some point, since it's such a, ah, uh, one of those uh, topics, listen, Anybody want to, wants to jump in after a while? I have a few things, a few things I wanted to say, but if you want to add on to it, I'm going to open up, let you come on in. Dr. Tracy Bond, woo-hoo, one hot one, Lance. I can slay this topic every day. Transference is real. M. Lola, welcome. Tracy J., welcome. Oh, we got the superstars up in here tonight. <laughs> ah, I love to see the enthusiasm, but I'm going to keep chipping away. You know, I'm going to keep chipping away. Every diamond that we excavate from the, uh, the range of human nature may not be a topic that hits a thousand percent or glistens as much, but it's still gonna be a diamond. We're gonna say that much, right? I'm gonna take my time with this one because this really for me is a topic that is near and dear to me, right? In many ways. Let me just say it this way. We're going to start out laid back. We're going to just get in. It's like two fighters fighting and they're feeling each other around and eventually, eventually they go in deeper and deeper and deeper until we see an epic battle that's classic. And why do I say it's near and dear to me? Because I've seen this phenomenon so many times. Now, let me just say to the men, to the fellas out here, there are mothers who will treat you terrible. There are fathers that will treat you terrible. Instead of doing one overall show where parents who treat the children terrible, no. We're going to go through each one. It may not be where tomorrow we do another parent, but over time, we're going to go in because each one has, in my opinion, right, has its own individual um, idiosyncrasies, uh, proximities, uh, different, different magnetisms between them. And in these cases, it is not the daughter's fault. Let's get this straight from the beginning. It is not the daughter's fault. So for those out here who have suffered because of a demon-possessed mother who knows how to pull your strings and treat you nice and make you drop your guard from young and then turn around and want to provoke you because of their own hang-ups, their own shortcomings, their own... This is not a show... Look, I'm glad I have a little bit of space on the battle to the side of the right, because I'm going to put a big two on it tomorrow. So if it's real hot tonight, and we talk about some things, and you digest what was said, and you say, hey, we got to come back with a no number two, hey, we'll come back with a number two. That didn't sound right. <laughs> number one, number two, right? Got to do number two. Wow, giant gang, welcome on in, head not and sons. Wow. We got some good ones up in here tonight. But yeah, it's, it's near and dear to me because this is all I'll say on this topic for me, but I have daughters. And to reveal a little tiny smidgen, I have an ex-wife. And my daughter looks just like me. And she's caught hell. Right? We'll leave that at that. That's why it means so much to me because the things that I've had to hear and endure, because you look just like your damn daddy, right? I don't wanna to put too much out there like that to shame or bring attention to my daughter, which I have several daughters. I don't have no boys, I have all girls, right? But I've seen it and it hurts and it's evil. And it's terrible. So I want to I want to bring up different angles on this. This is not just my experience. I'm talking about. Now, I threw that out to let you know my close proximity to it as a father. But there are many mothers that I've seen like this to their daughters. And how do you treat your daughter like this? Your daughter comes into the world innocent, 
and you have these thoughts of your own failures, your own shortcomings, your own reasons why that relationship with your daughter's father didn't work out. Who knows? It's a vast, it's a vast amount of reasons. But then it, but 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 it may be a vast amount of reasons, but none of these reasons are legitimate to bring harm to your daughter. They are not legitimate. I have come to the conclusion through many conversations, the one recently, that these types of women are demon possessed. They are. Let's flow. I am not ever against my black sisters, meaning grown women, all ages, right? All backgrounds, whether you're making money or not, whether you have a nice backside or not, whether you're college educated or didn't get out of high school, I love you all. So when I speak tonight, I'm not speaking as a person who has some hidden agenda against black women. Let me tell you something. I'm not saying this in a lustful manner, right? And I had my periods of that in my life. Ooh, but I love black women. Oh my God, I love them, I love them, I love them, I love them. I love everything about them. I love their essence. When they're right, I love everything about them, but I'm not gonna tolerate any who are imbalanced and have their hangups and don't wanna fix it. I'm not, and I will be dropping comments on the screen, Chance Rogers, I see you. Welcome in, brother. And of course, Tracy J. <laughs> if I can get all y'all in the chat to come on live, whoa, boy, that'll be nice. But I'm gonna talk a little bit. But, but I will share this comment. And if there are comments that come up as I'm flowing and it seems like I'm missing, I'm gonna scroll all the way back up to the top and, and, and address each one that may not be just a greeting or whatever. And like we always wanna do now, for most who are here, we're gonna start this as soon as you come in. People say, hit the like button. We already know that. You've been doing a great job with that. But we're gonna do a roll call. So when you come in, say Oklahoma, Tennessee, New York, whatever, not all have to do it because we have reasons why we may not wanna reveal where we are. But if you can do so, it makes it interesting, right? I'm gonna say this one comment, the other comments I'm gonna let fly because I just wanna get into my own little psycho rant, right? Dr. Tracy Bond, welcome again. She says, when my father passed away, my mother drove me six hours to the funeral and manifested the whole ride there and back. She went full strength into the darkness. Ain't no bleach in that mad mud. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you shared that part of your experience, Dr. Tracy Bond. Why? Because there's so many women, grown women, that have endured these things from childhood on up, or as soon as they started to get a sizable age where they develop now, they become competition to that mother. I can't cover every single reason that is not legitimate because there's no reason to hurt an innocent child. But we understand now that some of these, some of these people, some of these women, the only way we can explain it, and you have to understand, they are demon possessed. Ah, yes, mixed. Jezebel's having it's Jezebel spirits, and your own child becomes competition. Your own child becomes a threat. Okay, what is that noise I'm hearing? All right, kind of funny out here. It was a quick noise. I don't know what it is. I'm only doing construction close by, but it's dead quiet out here. So you know, you know what? Let me. Um, it was a call to um, action here. Let me just play this intro over. Or let me just play a song. All right, I'm gonna play it over. I'm gonna go down and check. I wouldn't do that unless I thought it was something, right? So let me go do this really quick. I'll be right back.
All right. I'm getting into the flow. It's 50 people here, 49. Don't go nowhere. I promise we're going to get into it. I just want to check that sound. The sound sounded kind of strange. I'll be right back. I think it's good. <laughs> I had the climbing steps and I ran down and I checked every room and every out window, every everything. You know, it was kind of a funny sound. You know, but up here in the mountains, I got to get used to this, right? Anyway, thank you for your patience. You know, let me get back to my flow. See, some of y'all left already. Come on, I ain't gonna hear no music. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, right? Everything is good. Okay. Let me get to, um, okay, here we go. Like I said, some comments that I don't highlight, right? Um, doesn't mean I'm ignoring you. I just want to get into the flow. So I'll come up to the top, and then after a while, I'll invite you. I really ran down these steps fast. Okay, y'all, here we go. Again, there's no reason for any mother to treat their daughter in such a way. And why I said it was near and dear to me, I explained earlier, but there are other reasons why. Because I've dated young ladies who, when I was much younger, I saw this type of thing. One aspect, it was weird. I dated several young ladies. And it was different levels of intensity where I could see that the mother was angry when I was introduced to her by the daughter. Well, serious things, just dating, like let's hang out. You know, these days, those categories are blurred. I even had situations where the mother tried to, in a very subtle way, entice me and I was wise enough at that point to know that it wasn't because of me but she wanted to show that daughter that number one he's not interested in you he'll take anything and probably turn around and say I hit on her you see and just to let her know I can take your man this is how deep this can go I've seen mothers compete with daughters. I've seen mothers angry at the fact that their daughters have better opportunities in the modern day than they did. Some of these mothers may have come from an impoverished situation and done somewhat well, enough for that daughter to stand on their shoulders as it should be to stand on the shoulders to achieve more, but they don't wanna have them see that success. They'll constantly remind them, oh, oh, I had to do this and I had to suffer to get to where I am. You better be lucky and you better feel lucky you are where you are and then turn around and sabotage them. How are you gonna make your daughter feel guilty? And like we said before, don't let that daughter resemble the father that you're no longer with. And again, for those who just came in after the music, I had to leave for a second to check, you know, check the perimeter. <laughs> you have these mothers who, for whatever reason, despise their daughters and they throw off on them. Now let's just take it to the next level. There's a couple little points I wanted to read. Generic, okay. In the intricate tapestry, of human relationships, the bond between mothers and daughters is often regarded as one of the most profound. However, there exists a troubling phenomenon where mothers harbor deep resentment toward their daughters, manifesting in ways that can be mentally and emotionally damaging. This issue transcends racial and cultural boundaries, yet it is particularly, okay, well, oh, that's an owl. That's what was making that noise. <laughs> Disturbing and prevalent in the African-American community, where the factors 
such as colorism and historical hardships can exacerbate the complexity of the strange or strained relationship. Number one, colorism and envy. In communities where colorism prevails, mothers may resent daughters with lighter complexions, projecting their own struggles onto them. The daughter's perceived advantages may serve as a constant reminder of the mother's own hardships, leading to resentment. Number two, unfulfilled ambitions. Mothers who are unable to pursue their dreams or ambitions may see their daughters as a chance to live vicariously through them. When the daughter follows a different path, it can trigger resentment as the mother feels robbed of her aspirations. Number three, reminders of failed relationships. Daughters may unwittingly resemble fathers, <clears throat> like I mentioned earlier, who the mothers harbor negative feelings towards. The sight of the father's characteristics in the daughter can trigger resentment, reminding the mother of the perceived failures in past relationships. Number four, jealousy of youth. Mothers who feel a sense of lost youth may resent their daughters for having the opportunities and freedoms that they did not. This jealousy can lead to attempts to control or manipulate the daughter's choices. Number five, that owl is like making some noises up on my roof. <laughs> Number five, competition for attention. Mothers who view their daughters as competitors for attention, especially from male figures, may resort to undermining their daughter's self-esteem to maintain a sense of control and dominance. Number six, fear of abandonment. Mothers who fear being left alone may sabotage their daughter's independence to ensure they remain close. This can manifest as overly controlling behavior or discouragement of a pursuit that lead to autonomy. Number seven, projection of unresolved trauma. Mothers who have experienced trauma may project their pain onto their daughters, using them as emotional outlets for unresolved issues. This can lead to a toxic cycle of emotional abuse. Number eight, financial dependence. Mothers dependent on their daughters for financial support may harbor resentment if they perceive their daughters as not providing enough, creating a tension and strain in the relationship. Number nine, unfulfilled maternal expectations. Mothers with rigid expectations for their daughters may resent them for not conforming to societal or family norms, causing disappointment and friction. Number 10, social comparison. Mothers who compare themselves unfavorably to their daughters, whether in looks, achievements, or relationships, may feel a sense of inadequacy that turns into resentment. The complex dynamics between mothers and daughters, when tainted by resentment, can have a profound effects on the mental health and well-being of both individuals. Recognizing and addressing these issues is crucial for breaking the cycle of negativity and fostering healthier relationships within families. By fostering open communication and understanding, we can work toward building bridges of empathy and support between generations. But you know what I say to that? Not with a damn demon. I hate to say it this way because we have mixed feelings. We wanna love our mothers. I'm speaking for the young daughter that grows into a woman in any point 
of the relationship, right? You come into this thing and you're like, I love my mother. And there are times that she showed you love. She knows when to pull that switch and, and, and to show you the love and pull you back in. And you say, well, maybe there's hope for us to have a loving relationship in an even exchange. But sometimes that daughter, and it, I'm just speaking from experience now. We're going to go back down the list. But sometimes that daughter gets beat down emotionally. Sometimes she can begin to feel that it's her fault. Sometimes and oftentimes she can begin to feel that she's inadequate, that she's not worthy. And oftentimes when they act out not feeling worthy, that demonic mother who has demons in them will rid themselves of it temporarily and become that person and want to soothe you. And it feels so good. See, I know a lot about this from observing different situations. From young, it was like I observed this yesterday. I've observed so many complex situations in this world. I don't have a degree, but I know what I see. I know what I saw. So now you grow and you move about the world. And oftentimes we do have to help our mothers. You can't even get props for that. The little you do or the much that you do but you do the best that you can because you begin to feel sorry for your mother as she gets older because you can pretty much frame and understand more. But it doesn't mean that the little girl inside of you has ceased to exist. You walk with this pain. You walk with this hope that things can get right before she leaves and transitions. And we know anybody can transition. The daughter can transition first. We understand that, but chances are that mother's going to go first. And you now have become a master of your mother, meaning that you understand her. See, children, right? And I've said this before in other shows. Children, they know their parents well. The child is in one room, and they say to the mother or the father, let's just say the mother, Mommy, can I have one of the ice cream cones out of the refrigerator? And they will lip sync the answer as the mother says it, knowing that the mother's going to say no and knowing why. Well, no, because you didn't, you didn't pass that test last week you were supposed to pass. Whatever. And she's mouthing out the words. It's incredible. DNA is incredible. Connectedness is incredible. And the children know the mother and the father and the rest of the family. And oftentimes that child can read that dysfunctional family, which is a whole different topic, but it's still the same thing, like a cheap novel. You see what I mean? All oh, these comments, I'm, 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 I'm peeking at it. <laughs> I just want to flow a little more. I don't know if anybody wants to come in soon, but let me know if you do. Not right now. Give me a few more minutes, because I think I stumbled on something very powerful here. I just want to let all of you daughters know that you are worthy and you are worthy of love. Even if you don't feel like you're worthy of love sometimes. I know it can be hard and I know it can be hard to open up to other people who may not understand, but understand that you're not alone. There are many women out here who, no matter what the age range, I think the oldest one that I spoke to was in her 80s and she still had issues with her mother who passed away 50 years ago. So, you know, time is a funny thing. We can see the chronological time move on, but it doesn't mean that time will remove the wounds inflicted in a situation like this. And we have to be active to talk to others. And, and sometimes it takes time to open up, but you've got to get this thing out of you. Yes, it scarred you. Yes, the scars are going to remain, but you can get better. You can live a normal life. And I don't mean normal like, uh, uh, how can I put it, nondescript or anything like that, meaning that a fulfilling life, no matter what. But it's really sad what some of these Jezebels are doing to their daughters. Look at the expression on this woman's face. That's not a hairstyle. Those are horns. See, I had to push the image up a little bit to show more of the face in the book. Because if I pulled it down to show the horns, 
from her nose down would have been covered. So I had to, ba that's my bad. I didn't want to push the picture back where it was too small when I created this banner. But the thing is, like I said, you're dealing with a demon. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. While this mother may have the starter kit feelings that we described, probably in some cases, it's not strong enough to surface where the child can feel it, to surface where it becomes the child being attacked on different levels, okay? But you have demonic forces, and I'm not speaking no religious stuff, I'm talking some real stuff that I've seen and observed. Demonic negative forces that we don't see. Just because we don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Have you seen oxygen before? But we're breathing it in right now. You take the oxygen away and you'll understand that it's very much there. And this is something I do know, and it's not off topic, but I just want to say, and let me stand up here. I hate sitting down so much. I sit, sat down so much as a bus driver, sat down so much as a corrections officer. Let me stand up here. I, 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 if I dream I'm sitting down, I wake up and walk around. <laughs> this is what I this is what I understand. And this is not me reading any book. This is not for me being told this by anybody. And if any point the sound sounds funny, let me know. And if for any reason there's a quick power outage, stick with me if I cut off, you know, because I'll come in through the phone. All right. I just always have to say that because sometimes we get down in these shows and all of a sudden, poof, everything's gone. You know, I'm up in the mountains, y'all. Well, this is what I know. These designated, I say designated, these, these, the spiritual energy. I don't have to be careful how I talk here because I know with me on this, but there are people out here who are going to listen to this and say, oh, he's talking that crazy stuff again. No, it's not crazy. This is real. We all have had different experiences on a spiritual level, some more profound than others. I, I'm a feeler. I feel people's spirits. I feel them. And I've had situations where I have seen things, probably with my spirit eye, but my eyeballs saw what my spirit eyes were seeing. So probably I saw it, you know, I'm gifted that way to a point. Maybe 98% of the time or 98 and a half or 0.5, I'm not going to see things. But sometimes I catch glimpses of things. I'm just going to be honest with you. And the more I'm attuned to those spiritual levels, the more I see. So I'm up here in the mountains getting all guru out, getting all attuned and centered. I'm like, oh, oh man, please. I don't want to see nothing up here. <laughs> and I had that situation the other day with the woman in the window. I told you all about that. I'll tell you until the end of the show. But this is what I know. Say, for example, let's just make up a theoretical situation to explain this. And for the young ladies who are here, you're that daughter, okay? Um, for the gentlemen here, <laughs> you're not their daughter, but try to understand and think of it that way, okay? Because this happens to young men too. Your innocence as a child, your innocence, you're a clean slate, oh yeah. Just like they say, and those old grandmothers say, that child done been here before. But regardless, you still are a clean slate to the situation that you're born into. And you do have people. All people contain a certain amount of energy, positive, negative, and a swirl of both. And in that swirl of both, we're either moving toward the positive or moving toward the negative. We very seldom hold on to the neutral. Because neutral to me is negativity in disguise. To me, there is no neutral. So you have these disembodied entities that church folk will say, it's a demon. And see, many of us will say it's crazy because we have this uh, uh, imagery of the demons that they show in the movies. 
And very much it could it could look like that. I've had those kind of experiences. There's some very ugly things visually. But the ugly thing and the ugly thing that's inside the person, that could be a very beautiful person. That could be a very beautiful, and from a man's point of view, very sexy person. Let me tell you something. In my heyday, I have slept with many demons. That's another topic. And I mean, the encasement of that beautiful woman that possessed that energy. And I'm quite sure many of us men can say that. And there are a lot of young ladies out here who would say that they've dealt with men who are demonic. You don't know the energy of these people sometimes. But you can move from one situation to the next. And the new person that you're dealing with or the new situation, maybe on a job that you're dealing with or friendship that you're dealing with, all those strangers that you met and got to know over time, all of a sudden, they seem to have the same energy towards you from someone else five years ago, six years ago. You haven't seen them in this long time, but this thing jumps. It jumps. Not to relieve the person or the mother from treating you that way. But if your mother transitioned and, and, and you might get in a relationship or you may have a friend or an aunt, after a while, she might start acting the same way. And the effect that they have on you is that when they keep provoking you, when they keep needling you, when they keep trying to attack your health, uh, attack your healthy psyche, your mind, your positive, your ascending, you feel good, and here they come. They've been cool for a couple of days, but it's like something inside of them resents the fact that you feel good, and they gotta throw a bone in your plans, in your machinery. And you know it's coming. And you know how to deal with it. But you just get annoyed and you lose it. You lose it. The best way to deal with these type of entities when they kick into this mode, the mothers who are coming after the daughters, is silence. Tune them out. But they're too close to you. They know the buttons to push. They know the small cracks in the armor that were bigger at one time, but because you're more in tune with yourself and meditated and got yourself stronger, the world can't see them, but they can see them. You see, this particular mother has the demon inside of them and has escorted the demon right to the points to let them know. It's like you have a person in your household and you all know the security codes of that house. And they go out and bring a burglar to the house and say, here, here's the security code, break on in and cause chaos and rob whatever you want to rob. It's the same thing, the same thing. And so they keep on provoking. And you're like, wait a second, they're doing this again. I was cool to laugh three times, but not today, not today and they keep provoking, and they start talking about the boyfriend that you should have been with when you were 22 years old, and what happened? Oh, this and this and that. Oh, that job that you lost, and it was paying so good, and now you're not getting paid no more like you used to. Oh, you're putting on weight, and you're gonna get fat, and nobody gonna want you, and look at you, you you almost 60 years old, and you ain't made nothing with you. It's like, leave me alone, what are you doing? And after a while, after a while, you see, the demon got you where it wants you to be. You're trying to look at this thing as your mother, and you see your mother, but the demon is in full force. And you don't say, you know what? Demon, we're going to get down. You might even cuss. And other people say, oh, it's not nice to cuss your mama but they don't know that you've been dealing with this thing for your entire life. Bringing up things from when you were a child, bringing up things that embarrass you a little bit because they can do this. 
and they look at you waiting for you to break. And if that thing they just said didn't make you break, well, here comes another one. And they keep on going until they hit a nerve and you quit. And you're like, F-U-C-K, I'm going to let you have it. I know it's a demon inside of you, but that doesn't absolve you from the responsibility of being sensitive to my needs. You done told the demon all the secrets, and now you let the demon clap your lips to come at me. You see what I mean? So you let them have it. And you let them have it good. But now, you're off now. Your voice is gone now. You can't sleep now. They fast asleep. They got you to where they wanted to get you to. You shaking in the middle of the night. You can't even focus on the things that you set on your to-do list for the next few days. That's what the demon wanted to throw you off. But it doesn't mean I'm saying it's a demon. So, oh, it ain't the mother. The devil made her do it. No, they work hand in hand. And then that mother will come around. And it's almost like those shows where we would see the werewolf. The werewolf terrorizes everybody. And somebody puts a cap in his ass and he lays back and he's dead. But them old black and white movies where you saw the hairy werewolf turn back into a human. And this is what happens with these mothers. All of a sudden when they broke you down. All of a sudden when they threw you off and took your mind away and they provoked you so much to go off, they'll come to you. Is everything all right? Can I get you a cup of tea? Just like nothing happened. What the heck? And this is that way of control. You're like, I'm not calling any of my sisters a dog. This is just an example. You're like a dog with a big yard on a short leash. You got a you got an eight foot leash around your neck that's wrapped around a tree, and the pan of food is ten feet away, and you hungry, and the person who takes care of you is sitting on that porch looking at you struggle to get that extra two feet of the leash so you can get some food, and only after a while they'll take that pan and push it torch 1.75 feet closer so now you're straining to get it it's like they want to see you struggle there's that resentment because I didn't have it so easy and you got a man that's interested in you and I didn't have it so easy I had to struggle your damn daddy's no good he left after he found that I was pregnant with you trying to make it seem like it's the child's fault because often children will internalize that. Oh man, my daddy's not around because of me. How could you do that to a young mind? How can you do that? And that's just one scenario out of countless. But what about the cold ass mother who sees greatness in their chosen one of a daughter? And instead of saying, I have been blessed with a wonderful, intelligent, obedient, smart daughter. They try to do everything to convince her that she's not loved. They try to do everything to convince her that she doesn't have anything worthwhile to contribute to the, to the conversation, to the point where it makes that daughter feel insecure about knowing anything to share. Well, I, my mother never let me talk, so it's probably, it's probably true. They may not say to themselves that I'm not lovable, but they don't feel lovable. And they put that, so, that, that part of themselves to the side because it ain't gonna happen. And so when relationships and opportunities for relationships present themselves with people who are upstanding, with men who may not be, I don't mean men like a whole lot of them, but, but, but women meet men. And some are good and some are bad. And you have a chance sometimes that there's one that you know and it didn't work out. And, you know, and I guess I don't deserve anybody. And that mother 
will be dead and gone oftentimes. And here you are struggling with these things that were put into your mind that you don't deserve. That's why I say there's something near and dear to me. You see, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look at these the different chats right now. I didn't know this was 45 minutes in. I'm in no rush. I know I took a couple minutes to check around the property. Everything is good. Sometimes you hear these noises and stuff. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. Whoa, there are a lot of comments here. In the meantime, and in between time, let me know. Um, I'm gonna drop a link because I still have much more to say. But I want to give a chance to anyone who might want to say something. So I'm going to drop this link. If you come on in, you don't have to show your face. If you want to, I can remove the banner. But as of now, if you come in, um, your face won't be shown. So don't be shy about that. And if there are buttons to push to not show it at all. But if you do come on, I will see you unless you hide that part. So make sure you're uh, presentable, OK? But I won't tell if you're not. <laughs> I'm not going to show it to anybody. So there's a link right there. And this is what it looks like across the screen. And um, it's in the chat room. And you can hit it at any point. I'm going to continue to talk. But as soon as you come in, I'll drop it again here. We'll give you the floor because we need to talk about this. And as far as our sisters who are on the show now, if anyone comes on, it will be good for those who are listening to the show because they need to hear this from someone else. Because lots of times from what I've found, 